Hello, Biotech 45, it's Vanessa again, and we're going to talk about the rest of the digestive system. So, should be pretty exciting. Um, so, first off, you can see I have a couple of intact models here. So, I'm going to kind of take them apart and show you how stuff is connected. And I also have a couple of handy dandy uh, organs and such on the side as well. Okay? So, we've talked about the mouth. Why do we care about the mouth, and why do we consider it part of the digestive system? Because that's where you're going to first put food into your body and you're going to mash it up into smaller pieces so you can send it on down to the digestive system so it can continue to take apart that food. Because ultimately, what are we doing when we're eating? We're taking in all these different substances and we're going to eventually break them down into their individual parts. So, for example, that bread and meat is going to be put, broken down into carbohydrates and amino acids and used as energy or used to put it together of the new parts of the cell and new parts of your body. So that's the whole point of what we're talking about here. So we started already with the mouth when we covered that. We're moving on down from the mouth, from the oral cavity, into the esophagus. So um, the esophagus, actually, can you hand me a head model real quick? The esophagus kind of passes behind all of this stuff. So you can see, like, this is the windpipe and all that stuff. Um, and here you can see there is your oral cavity. And then going down from your oral cavity, there's the esophagus right there. And it's passing behind the windpipe, but of course in front of the vertebrae here. So there's your esophagus there from a side view. So let's take this apart just a little bit. So we can expose some of the stuff. So I'm going to take off his lungs. Lungs we won't talk about till next time. And we've already talked about the heart, so we don't really need that anymore, right? It's a pretty nice little heart, though. All right. So you can see that behind the heart, we have that trachea splitting off to go towards the lungs. And here's our pink tube that is the esophagus. And the esophagus is just that. It's just a tube that's transferring chewed up food down into the stomach. Okay? Um, here I'm going to take off this secondary organ, and I think we talked about it in a little bit, so that I can expose the stomach. So you can actually see on this particular model, I'm actually going to drag him closer. I'm going to have to support him a little bit. On this model here, you can actually see that the esophagus is entering, well, maybe you can, entering the abdominal cavity, and it connects up quite nicely with our stomach. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. <laughs> We're okay. Everything's fine. There we go. So, connects up quite nicely with our stomach. Okay? So, you do need to know the individual segments of the stomach. So, I just happen to have one right here. So here we go. So the esophagus was going to come down and connect up to this part right here. And yeah, let's try and line this up so you can actually see. There you go. It's the same organ, right? So the esophagus connects up to here. Food is ground up in here and it's eventually shipped out to the small intestine here. So the different structures are as follows. First off, we have this sphincter here. Um, you can think about the digestive system as a bunch of compartments that are separated from each other by sphincters. So the esophagus is one tube, and, the, uh, and it's separated from the stomach via a sphincter. So the first sphincter here is actually called a cardiac sphincter, which kind of makes sense if you think about where our friend the heart just was. So he is right about here, right? So just underneath the heart, we have the cardiac sphincter. And in a human, it overlays just a little bit more. You might be able to see that on here, kind of. So on here, you can kind of see that. So here is a side view of a human, and you can see that there's the heart, and here's that stomach and the cardiac sphincter right here going up into the esophagus. But you can definitely see that the heart kind of overlays this area. This is important because there's another area that's named after the heart as well. Make sure he doesn't slide again. <laughs> okay. So that's the cardiac sphincter. That is the first sphincter that goes into the stomach from the esophagus, okay? Moving on down, we have the cardiac region. So the cardiac region is this area. Well, let's open this guy real quick. So there's that cardiac sphincter. So it's this area that's immediately underneath the sphincter. This is called the cardiac area, okay? There's different areas of the stomach just based on their shape and where they're located kind of in the body, okay? Okay, next is the... Fundus. So the fundus um, is kind of interesting. It's this really big exaggerated curvature up at the top of the stomach. 
So this is one of the ways I could actually tell what the top of the stomach is versus like the bottom. So here's that cardiac sphincter and then there's the fundus right there. Okay, this big exaggerated curvature. And you can see that really nicely inside of this model as well. Next is the body of our stomach. So here's our stomach again. I'll try and have it this oriented the same as the guy behind me. But for the body of the stomach, that's all of this, basically. All of that is considered to be the body of the stomach. So if I open it, just to show you, this is the body of the stomach. So this is the fundus, this is the, cur the cardiac region, and then this is the body of the stomach. Moving on, we have the pylorus. So the pylorus is like an additional little pouch just before um, the stomach dumps out into the intestine. So here's that fundus again. So this extra little pouch here at the bottom, that is your pylorus, this whole thing, okay? Nice, the nice thing is, is that right after our pylorus, we have this sphincter that empties out into the small intestine, and it's called the pyloric sphincter. So the areas are related. Same with up here, right? We have the cardiac area and the cardiac sphincter. So here's that pylorus, and here's the pyloric sphincter. So that's pretty nice. Um, we also have on here the gastric folds or rugae. So if you open this up, you can see that inside of the stomach, there's all these folds and ridges. So those are going to be the rugae or the gastric folds, whichever term you prefer. These are important because it increases, it partly because it increases the surface area. So that it, there's all these, uh, there's all these uh, epithelia that are lining the inside of the stomach that pump out hydrochloric acid. So that's pretty cool. But also because it provides more surface to grab onto food because the stomach is actually has multiple layers of muscle and they kind of grind up food. So if you got all these folds inside and you're grinding everything up, it catches on that food and helps to master or to uh, break it up into physically smaller pieces. Next on your list, you have the lesser and the lesser and greater curvature. So for the greater curvature, that's this part out here of the stomach. For the lesser curvature, it's this part right here. Okay. So don't confuse that with the fundus. The fundus is that big exaggerated curvature at the top of the stomach. The greater curvature is this outer edge, and the lesser curvature is this inner edge. Cool. And I could show you on here as well, just real quick. Since I have it here, and I don't want to neglect him, let's take out his lungs, let's take out his heart, and there you go. Okay, so again, I've exposed the esophagus, here's the diaphragm, and here's his liver. Okay. So you can see the esophagus going down here into the stomach, connected here at that cardiac sphincter, right? And then here's that fundus right here, the lesser curvature, greater curvature. This is the cardiac area. This is the pylorus. Then look inside, and you can see the rugae. Okay, so all those little folds and such. And here's a close-up. There you go. And on this one, you can actually see really nicely also that pinch that indicates where the pylorus starts. Okay, so next let's move on to the small intestine. Um, my favorite model for the small intestine is actually going to be the one in, in this model. So, I happen to have one right here. There you go, okay? Um, and there's a couple things I want to tell you about the small intestine and about this model in particular and how I'm going to identify some things, okay? Now, the small intestine can be divided into three basic segments. Now, obviously, for these models, I can't sit and unravel them and be like, what segment is this? What segment is this? And it's difficult to tell exactly where one thing starts and where one thing ends. So I'm going to tell you exactly how we are going to test you on these different segments of the small intestine. So check this out. First off, let's put the stomach back in there so you can actually see how it connects. So here we can see here's the pylorus so I'm indicating with my thumb. Here's that pyloric sphincter, and it deposits directly into the small intestine. The first segment of the small intestine, let me turn this around so you can see, there you go. There's the start of the small intestine and it wraps around. The first segment of the small intestine is the duodenum. The duodenum is super important and kind of different from the rest of the small intestine because it's directly associated with a couple of different secondary digestive organs. So in this case here, we're going to talk about him in a second, but this is the pancreas, 
he's putting all kinds of enzymes and stuff into the duodenum. And you can even see on this particular model, there's this little green dot right there. That's another place where there's, being, there's uh, enzymes and such being dumped into the duodenum. And we also have kind of connected up to this the liver. So the liver, um, let me see exactly, it doesn't fit all so well in here. Anyway, but the liver, you can actually see there's this green stuff underneath. And there's this green duct right there. So that connects up to the liver. And that's right there, that little green dot on the inside of the duodenum. So the duodenum is super important. We have all this stuff going on. All the food is now just entering into there. We have all these enzymes being dumped into there. So the duodenum is physically, there's different stuff happening, okay? How do I want you to identify the, the, the duodenum? I'm going to put a sticker on this segment right here, okay? Whenever I indicate the duodenum, I will have it directly associated with a pancreas in some fashion. So for example, I have this guy that belongs to, the, to this muscle model over here. He normally belongs on there. But I have this guy here, and you can see, here's the pancreas, here's this piece of small intestine. That is the duodenum. So if I, if I want you to identify the duodenum, it'll be directly associated with the pancreas every time. Okay? It's not going to be some magical piece of intestine that I throw out on the table. Okay. <laughs> Next, we have two more segments of the small intestine. Um, these ones are a little bit dif more difficult to dissociate from one another, so I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. This upper section up here, so if I put a dot around here somewhere in the upper part of your small intestines, that is going to be the jejunum. The jejunum is the second section of your small intestine. So you're, that's your jejunum. The last segment of your small intestine, you can even see that there's a little number on here, that is your ileum. So the ileum is the last segment of your small intestine, and I will always put the sticker down low, okay? It doesn't matter if it's this uh, model or if it's this model on the muscle guy. It's going to be the same, where jejunum is going to be up here somewhere, and then the ileum is going to be down here somewhere, okay? Okay. So this leads me to the next part of the uh, intestine. I don't know if that's the next part on the list. Yes, excellent, cool. <laughs> so you can see that the next part of your list after ileum is the ileocecal valve. This is important. It actually segments the small intestine from the large intestine. So I told you guys already to think of the digestive system as a bunch of compartments that are separated from one another with sphincters, right? So we had a sphincter is separating the esophagus from the stomach. We have a sphincter that separates the stomach from the small intestine at the beginning of the small intestine. We also, also have a sphincter that separates the small intestine from the large intestine. So looking down here, isn't this cool? It's like a little hinge. But anyway, so you can see that the ileum kind of wraps up around here, and here's your large intestine, right? Everybody kind of knows that. But open that little hinge, and you can see there's the ileum depositing directly into the large intestine, okay? So this right here, where it's dumping into there, that is your ileocecal valve. Ilio for ileum. Where is it depositing into? It's depositing into this pouch. That's the beginning of the large intestine. And this is called the cecum. Cecum. C-E-C-U-M. Okay? So the ileocecal valve is just from the ileum into the cecum. That easy. Okay? Turn this guy around on the back of this part of the large intestine. So we're still on the same side. Don't get confused. We're still on the same side here. So coming off of the cecum, we have this little tail, this gray tail. That is going to be your appendix. That's your appendix. I know it's like kind of weird, not like what you would expect. It's thought that, that perhaps this is a vestigial part of our large intestine that we don't really you know, use so much now, but maybe we did at one point uh, more useful for grinding up you know, grasses and digesting cellulose. But we don't really do that anymore. All right, so here's your cecum. And as we go up from the cecum, because remember, the small intestines had all that food work its way through, and now it's deposited into the large intestine, and it needs to continue on its journey, right? So going up, we have the ascending colon. Ascending, because it goes up. Then it goes across, as you can see. This is going to be the transverse colon. So transverse, because it goes across the midline, right? Transverse to the midline. Then it's going to go down here. And unsurprisingly, this is the descending colon, okay? Now, where the names get a little bit weird, and there's only a few models that show this really well, this is the best one for it. 
The next little segment here, I'm, so I'm turning this over, so this is the descending side, this is the ascending side. Now on the bottom here, you can see that the large intestine kind of kinks, and it makes this S shape, right? This S shape right here. This S shape is the sigmoidal colon. Um, if you guys know anything about Greek alphabets or math, you guys know that there's the letter sigma, sigma meaning S. So sigmoid or uh, sigmoidal graphs, that's also like an S shape. So anyway, this is the sigmoidal colon, okay? It's just this S part. And notice it goes transverse across the body, okay? So if there's a segment that's going down, guaranteed it's not going to be the sigmoid. It only goes across like this and back, okay? The reason why I say that this is one of the better models is because if we bring over our friend, the muscle man model, here we go. Okay. So if we bring over our friend, the muscle man model, um, and we start taking out parts, so let's take out his stomach so you can see some stuff here. And let's take out his intestines so you can see what is going on with his life. You'll notice that if I take his intestines, and just to show you guys again, there's the cecum, there's the ileocecal valve, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon. Now if you turn him over and look at the back, his sigmoidal, sigmoidal colon is chopped off. Okay, We can't see it. It's not there. So if I put this out and I put a sticker you know, somewhere around here or something like that just to be tricky, it's not going to be the sigmoidal colon. The sigmoidal colon sticks out transverse from the body. So if I turn it to the side, you can totally see that it doesn't stick out. Okay. Where you can kind of see it in here, actually, is down in the pelvic cavity. So you can totally, there you go. You can see that there's this segment of large intestine that kind of goes, sticks straight back. So this would be your sigmoidal colon here. Last piece of the puzzle for our digestive system, um, or at least for the tubular part of it, right, the uh, alimentary canal, is going to be the rectum. So the rectum goes straight down. So in other words, this model here that I love so much because it has the sigmoidal clone really nicely does not have a rectum because the rectum goes straight down. So how am I going to show the rectum then if I can't pull out a model to show you? Well. Usually I can do this with a reproductive model, and we're not covering reproductive just yet, but um, usually I'll pull out a reproductive model. So here we go, okay? Here it is in three-dimensional glory. So you can see from the back here, let's look at the side. So this here is your large intestine that comes down, so this is going to be the rectum. You can also see it from this side where it's not um, broken up in, in half. But here is the rectum coming down, okay? There you go, that's the part of the large intestine. And if you open this, you can see super nicely, there's your large intestine, and it's coming down straight, so that is going to be the rectum, okay? Um, I believe, nope, it doesn't have it in there. So that's going to be the rectum coming down only. You can also see if I yanked out these parts, but you can sort of maybe kind of a little bit see that there's the rectum coming down just off of the sigmoidal colon right there, okay? Lastly, we have the last parts of the uh, small or the large intestine, excuse me. So that's going to be the anal canal and the anus. So again, we're going to turn to our reproductive model here, and there's the rectum coming down. The anal canal is going to be this part here, right there, and then, whoops, there we go. <laughs> and then this part here is going to be the anus. So the anus is the last sphincter of the digestive system. So that's what you need to know about that, okay? Okay, and I'm going to talk just a little bit about our uh, secondary um, digestive organs, and then we'll be done. So, you guys saw I already took out a bunch of organs, one of which is the um, liver, right? So, the liver is right, goes like this, right? Slots right in there, super nice and cozy. So, the liver is a large organ that produces bile. It's always this brown looking thing, so no matter what kind of model I put out from what, you know, muscle man that I came from, it's always going to look pretty much like this. Um, so the liver produces bile. We have another organ here, this guy, this green guy called the gallbladder. The gallbladder stores bile. This is actually really useful because the liver is constantly making bile, so it's kind of just trickling out a little bit at a time. But let's just say you eat a really fatty meal, because that's what bile is for. Bile is made to emulsify fats, so that's not just running out of your body. 
Um, so we have the gallbladder here to store it. So if you have a really fatty meal, the gallbladder can actually secrete a little extra bile to help emulsify that those fats. Okay. So gallbladder is really useful, stores bile. Liver is super useful, makes bile, amongst other things. It's also like the filter of the body. So it helps filter out toxins and stuff because it has all these really cool enzymes inside. Okay. The other thing you need to know about is the pancreas. And the pancreas, I've kind of introduced you guys to a little bit. He sits here and dumps fluids right into the duodenum. And I also have a little pancreas right here. So here's our pancreas. And again, you can see how it's hooked up directly to the duodenum. Super cool model. Um, what you need to know about the pancreas is just the pancreas itself. So you need to be able to identify it. And also, here's the pancreatic duct, which is like this fish bone that runs down the center. So the pancreas makes its own enzymes that it secretes into the pancreatic duct, and then it goes down the pancreatic duct into the duodenum. Okay, lastly on here, we can see that there is the spleen. So the spleen is kind of weird because a lot of these organs you think of as being maybe bilateral, and I, I used to think of the spleen as kind of the same. But here's the spleen right here. It's only on one side of the body, so it's going to be on the, what, the left side, kind of anchored up here just underneath the thoracic cavity, but mostly against the abdominal wall. And you can see that it's kind of connected here with the pancreas. So the spleen itself is an immune uh, in a, an immune um, organ, so it helps with your immune system and the, your immune defense. It does some other stuff too with um, secreting various hormones, but you're not going to learn about that in lab. So just be able to identify the spleen, be able to identify the pancreas here associated with it, be able to identify the pancreatic duct, and don't forget that the duodenum will always be associated with the pancreas. So we've covered the digestive system in total. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope that was helpful. I uh, hope it wasn't TMI. And uh, I guess we'll see you guys next time for the kidney video. And have a great week.